at a certain point, either you get frustrated or you feel that this is never going to happen and something better happen now because we're not getting any younger. What does risk mean to you? I mean, I think that, I mean, risk is, is, is having to potentially part with something you don't want to part with, let's say. It's, it's, look, I think that, I think a better word is gambling. I think that filmmakers, especially indie filmmakers, are, they're gamblers. I mean, who knows what's going to work or not? It's a risky proposition, but we're kind of gambling, are we? Like, are we going to like, you know, perhaps mortgage an already paid off house? Are we going to like, uh, are we going to ask our uncle for money? Do I know if I can get that money back? What's risky for him? Is it risky for me? It's risking that relationship. Um, you know, it's, it's, you have to be, I think as someone who tries to be risk aversive, like trying to do everything I can to like to to mitigate risk, um, there's there's only so much you can do, and at the end of the day, I guess gambling. Like you ha you have to understand that this money may never come back. Whoever is investing your film may, must need to understand that this money may may never come back. Hopefully, you've been, made a good enough script. Hopefully, you have a background to help market the thing and you're kind of you know, keyed into the business end of things or you have somebody who's on your team who is, who can help this money come back so it's not as much a risk, but it's always there. And it's frankly always still a gamble in this day and age. There's different ways that you can get paid now and they change from like month to month, unfortunately. So you gotta keep, on, keep up on that too as well. So it's, yeah, what is risk? I mean, risk is fear. Risk can be, you know, uh, different things, but ultimately you have to be content with uh, gambling, but gambling intelligently, if that makes sense. How do you approach risk? I mean, we try our best to, to mitigate things. Um, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, for example, my director did not feel confident about one of the actors we had hired at one point, and so we said, listen, We'll fly you up to wherever, you know, they're shooting their show and you'll get like, you know, a couple of days to work with them. And hopefully that can, you know, take off some of the fear you have. And I don't feel that this is a risky proposition. You don't feel that this is a risky proposition anymore. You can do different things to allay people's fears and hopefully mitigate risk. Um, you can't always. I mean, some things, you know, come out of the woodwork and you did not expect that to happen. Well, hopefully you're insured. Right, that's another way to mitigate risk. Um, uh, you know, hopefully you've uh, paid for all the permits and everything else you're supposed to, and it's not just gorilla. Um, hopefully, you know, you've been smart about dealing with the things in a business-like fashion, and, and and not screwing over people. All right, I mean, there's a golden rule, right? Doing to others, let's say, right? Well, feed your crew, feed your crew well. They're working for very little. You better feed them well, and you better, you know, treat everyone so well that they don't try to turn you into some sort of a union production if you're not union, for example, right? Um, these are very simple, commonsensical things, I think, that can help mitigate risk, hopefully. And I thought it was great what you said earlier about just risking a relationship if you're asking for money or asking for favors or whatever. That, that's, a, that's a really good point. Yeah. You know, because the movie may come and go, may do well, it may not, but you're risking a relationship and you're, and you're sort of standing in that person's eyes. So. Sure. What were the risks that you took to make one BR? Well, um, I, uh, I mortgaged an already paid off house. That was one thing. Uh, to me, uh, you know, we had, we had a, we had a, we were first time filmmakers. We were first time like, you know, producers and we were first time, you know, our writer director was the first time writer director. Um, and, we weren't only just risking our money, we were, res we were risking our reputations, we were risking, you know, uh, in some ways, maybe like our livelihoods for years to come to try to, you know, pay off this movie and the debt that would incur. Um, you know, I think that you, anytime you make a movie, you put yourself out there, you risk yourself in a myriad of different ways. Like you, you risk yourself, uh, in a professional sense, you risk yourself in a, a creative sense. Um, the best thing you can do is surround yourself with enough people that can mitigate risk. 
if you're an experienced producer, maybe you have some more experienced producers that are guiding guiding you and helping guide the ship, helping kind of like be your consigliere, consigliere or what have you that can, you know, kindly they get the material, they understand where you are at, they understand where this film is at, now this is what we need to do, this is my suggestion to you. And you should take their suggestion, right? Um, that's something that helps mitigate risk, having experience like on the crew, whether it be an experienced DP or for a first time director, which is, I think is really important, um, or experienced actors who uh, really can hit their marks and know everything, so you're making your days and so forth. Um, these are all things that can mitigate risk for you for an independent filmmaker. Was this something you had done before, is, is take out a line of credit or something against your home? No, no, not at all. Okay. <laughs> Like, I mean, in some ways, it could be called foolish uh, in a lot of ways. I had never done it, but I felt so strongly about the project, and I did feel that, um, you know, we, we came to a, a certain part point in the production where we made the movie in December 2017. We realized we needed reshoots. We couldn't get the band back together, so to speak, until September of 2018, right? And we sat and worked with David Marmer. We were like, okay, listen, I don't care if we lose this money. I just want to make a good movie. This is our first movie. This has to be good. So if we're doing reshoots, let's put some more money out there. If we're doing this, that, the other, we'll wait until it's good. We actually made the mistake of actually applying to festivals like before the movie was done. This is a nice piece of advice. Uh, never submit a film unless it's 100% done. Because you think that the screeners can watch with better eyes than that. They can go, oh, it's color corrected. It's not color corrected. Oh, it's like, yeah, I can see that. I can see it'll be good. They can't see it if it'll be good. They, I promise you they can't. Uh, and it's literally like, you know, we got rejected from 17 different festivals before we got accepted. And the funny thing is, we got accepted from, from some of the festivals that rejected us in the first place. We're like, you know you rejected this film last year. Like, oh, we did? Oh, no, we did it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> they took us the second time because it was finished. Right? So that's, that was something that we worked with David on. We trusted each other. That's another big thing um, in terms of like, you know, things that can do away with risk. Um, we trusted each other enough to um, take the time, to take the time to let it get to a place where it was good enough and then it would be accepted by festivals. And then, you know, then after it was accepted by like the, like one big festival, it got accepted by a ton of different festivals, right? We had a festival strategy, if you will. Like we had a list of like dream festivals we wanted to go to. And the second we got accepted to one of them, we then started calling up the other ones. Hey, listen, we'd love for you to be our European premiere, our New York premiere, or whatever it was. And this was funny because this saves you some money. Instead of actually like submitting to these festivals, you just say, hey, listen, we got into this. And they see a shiny thing, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is the new shiny thing. Oh, sure, just send us, send us the film. You don't have to like apply, you don't have to do anything. Else. Just send us the film, and you get in. If, it's, if, they, if they, they want it, if they think it's the new shiny thing, you get in. So you don't have to pay any like, you know, submission fees. So you applied to the 17 uh, festivals before the film was finished. Did you have to pay submission fees? We did, for a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, for a lot of them. I mean, sometimes you know somebody who knows somebody and they'll get you a waiver. But uh, by and large, we had submitted to them, like, you know, through Film Freeway or whatever you do. And um, it, it was interesting. Like, uh, you know, the film wasn't finished. And we thought, you know, we can't miss Sundance this year. Yeah, you should probably miss Sundance this year. You're never going to get in with the unfinished work. But that's the thing a lot of times what happens with people who make films. Investors want their money back. And so they're really trying to rush, you know, to get this thing out and whatever else. And so we didn't have that rush. That was like a lucky thing for us because we were just like, look, just make it a good movie. That's the main thing. Would you say sometimes the biggest risk is not taking a risk? I mean, sure. Like I said, you can hold yourself back. I mean, people hold themselves back. Like it's a thing where, oh, it's not the time, not this year, maybe next year. You know, you, 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 you definitely can be very self-defeatist. I mean, people do it all the time. You know, there's always an excuse. Oh, well, you know... My kid needs braces. I don't have time for this. Or whatever it is. It could, there's a myriad of different reasons as to why this could happen to you. I think, though, at a certain point, either you get frustrated or you feel that this is never going to happen and something better happen now because we're not getting any younger. That was a big impotence for my sort of, like get off my butt and, you know, stop doing this market research job and, you know, let's make this movie. Uh, was was just that like I mean what what I mean we got like eighty year old producer like I've never done a movie yet and I'm doing my first one at eighty 
Like at a certain point, you know, you could, but like, you know, if you want to do it for a living, maybe, maybe you start uh, switching careers right now, right? So that, that's, uh, that, that can happen. That can happen. But I think the thing of it is you have to talk yourself out of it and you have to sort of really, at some point, if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? You have to ask yourself that question. Yeah, not to be too much of a downer, but when you see someone your own age pass away, and it's like of natural causes or whatever, I think that's a, a huge motivator, however old you are. I think that yeah. you're like, oh, wow, this thing isn't going to go on forever. Sure. I, I got to do this now. So, And you talked about having some life changes and different things. So it yeah. sounds like you were in a, a good space in that sense where you were ready to try something and and failure wasn't too much. You, you really I, just Look, I think that, look, look, at a, a sad instead of, uh, people in film are crazy. Right, we're just crazy. Like you know, everyone you know, there's, there's a very nomadic lifestyle to a lot of it. Like you, like you, you really literally have joined the circus and you're you know going running our way to the next town and like there's that sort of thing about filmmakers where they they almost would do it for free if it wasn't for bills and like family and whatever else. You'd almost do it for free because you love it that much, right? And I think that's the majority of filmmakers who are passionate because like God knows we're not getting paid for it very well as far as independent filmmakers. You know, like you, you do it for the love of it. You do it because, you know, this is the, one of the only things you could see yourself doing. And for a lot of people, I think that there's an idea of having a safety net or not having a safety net. I think when you don't have a safety net, like this is all you have. You're going to make this work. You're going to make this work. Like you're going to figure out whatever problems is around you, doesn't matter because we need to make this work because I don't have a safety net. We're going to make this work, right? I think that, that that helps kind of push you along. I push you out of the nest, let's say, the nest of comfortability. It helps push you out and, and actually fly, I guess, in this analogy. Uh, if, 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 if either you fly or you fall to the ground, let's say, right? Uh, and hopefully you fly. So we're like carnies with cameras. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, we're very nomadic. Like, right. you know, you're going from one job to the other job to the other job. And, you know, and everyone speaks the same language. It works with this, like, this circus, right? So, 